Hello and welcome to FS Mania and part 2 of our Coronado Hawker 850 XP series. In this part 2 we will complete a cold and dark startup as well as input our flight plan into the flight management system. So climb aboard, buckle up, and let's go flying. Good morning and welcome to the flight deck of Coronado's Hawker 850 XP. We are in the cold and dark state. This is the way the aircraft is loaded up and there are a few things that we need to do to get going. I'll just grab my checklist here and we've already uh, loaded some fuel and cabin doors are closed and there's a circuit breaker panel right back here and actually I'm going to go ahead and just open up the cabin door there and uh, so we want to be sure all of these are uh, in and they're not modeled so they're always going to be in none of these switches work I think these are um, avionics master switches back here but anyway they're all in as they should be and our landing gear lever is located right here and it's in the down position parking brakes right here it is set all trims are centered elevator rudder and aileron and thrust reverser reversers are stowed and the high pressure cocks are these right here. They're actually supposed to be down. They load up as being on, so off is down. And then the low pressure cocks down here are supposed to be up, and they are, and they're not modeled. They are to shut fuel off um, to within the cowling of the engine if there's a fire. And so, but they're not modeled. And then these are the um, the fuel cross feed and transfer levers and they're supposed to be up and they are modeled and they will t help you to transfer of course fuel from one wing to another or from the ventral tank into the wings they're not really actually modeled correctly but uh, you can use them and they do well you can burn fuel from the center tank we've got fuel in our wing tanks so enough uh, I think 300 and 18 gallons or so in each tank so we got enough to get to where we're going we're not going to worry about the center tank on this trip I'll talk more about that later and let's go to the overhead panel and let's get our battery on and so we just want to put it in the on not the emergency and then we want to um, put the isolate battery switch in the norm position the exterior uh, battery charge external battery charge is off and the ex external power switches are both off and the bus bolts we've got 23 or so there bolts which is exactly what we're supposed to have and fire extinguishers switches are off seat belt signs let's cut those on and let's bring on the nav lights we're going to fire up our apu so we want those on when the airplane is powered up and let's just go back to the back panel sorry about that back here and let's start the apu so we can do a test and let's spring on the master switch first and let's try that test no test sorry that's the wrong test it's this one there we go so we can just test the indicators seems like that should be spring loaded but it isn't anyway so let's just start it just to bring this up into the start position and we can see the turbine spooling up back here EGT is rising. Generator loads rising. I haven't uh, closed the generator circuit, but it's already providing some power, so that's, I don't know if that's right, but at any rate, that's what it is. It's ready to load. We'll cut the bleed air on, and we'll call that good. So let's go back to our overhead. APU started. Okay, so the bus tie is closed, and that's, that's what we wanted and again we check the DC volts and now we've got higher voltage as we're getting power from the APU the inverters um, we should be able to arm this one it actually brings it on and which gives us an electrical uh, caution light so we can't arm it um, if we unless we want to look at the electrical caution light so it's so if either one of the other two inverters fail it will automatically come online but the other two inverters if we start those we don't get any indication that we have well we have uh, some voltage right here AC voltage right here so I guess they're already started I don't know but this isn't really I don't think modeled properly but at any rate um, 
that's what the, would come next and then let's get some panel lights on actually let's do that in fact let's go over here while I'm thinking about it and let's bring these on so some of these are three position some of them are just one click that's a one clicker that's a three position that's the overhead that's a three position there and that's the flood there and let's say I missed one the um, glare shield here we go that's a three position too okay we got all those on and let's go back up now pressurization override switch is in the auto position and that will needs to be there with the APU running otherwise we could potentially pressurize the cabin while we're sitting here on the ground the APU uh, bleed air is already on and cabin AC let's bring that up into the auto position so this is the way that um, passengers would board with the APU running and the air condition going we would have the cabin fan on the recirculation fan and we open up this damper for the uh, floor vents and then the cabin flood is for dumping all the air in one spot and aft part of the cabin okay the flight deck heat uh, valve is closed and the main air valves are closed seat belt signs we'll to cut those on yep. and emergency lights let's arm those and come down here and just have to kind of duck my head one thing is really hard here is the standby uh, attitude indicator let's see the standby instrument system or the electronic standby instrument system it will initialize it needs a couple minutes to do that I think actually three minutes and cancel that caution and then there's a radio master down there but what I was going to say is with this is the view that I set up for the pilot and with this view I can see the what's on the glare shield yeah it's great but the panel sets back so far and the text is so small on the displays that I can't read it yeah I really struggle with that so I will be zooming in and out so that we can read it and for example we'll zoom in here and here's the radio masters there they come in um, loaded up already on when the battery's on so they're on um, there is no radio control head it is we use the FMC uh, FMS to do that and so I'll show you how, how that works um, let's see while I'm right here I want to go ahead and disarm the thrust reserve reversers until we are ready to go and let's go up here and cut on the passenger oxygen supply right there one click cut that on we have uh, three-fourths of a tank of oxygen and here's the cockpit voice recorder it, there's a test switch right there the blue light indicates that it passed and come back down here the cabin high datum button is not selected and we don't want that that um, basically changes the level uh, the altitude in the cabin that we would receive a high pressure warning a high altitude warning so when it's not Pressed, we're going to get that at that warning at 9,300 feet or somewhere in that area and when it is pressed we'll get it at 14,000 feet and that would allow us to say for example if we wanted to take off from a high altitude airport like Lukla which is 9,000 feet then we wouldn't get a, a high altitude cabin warning with that pressed okay long explanation for switch that we don't need right now the um, electronic uh, ground proximity warning system switches need to be deselected and they are when they're selected they're like that so we can override the warnings and I'm not sure if that actually works I haven't tried that and the uh, master warning system is right here um, you know if you don't mind if I zoom in and out and nothing's modeled here but it should be in the normal position and um, I think you can dim it and I don't know how exactly you test that but anyway it is in the normal position here's the um, override for the gear warning and it doesn't it's not modeled I can't click it I wish I could because sometimes the horn goes off but anyway we'll live with that that's no problem 
the dump valve is right here and it's closed and it is modeled so it's closed and and also right here is the auxiliary hydraulic system and it should be in and it's not modeled and it is in and also down here you can kind of make it out there if I look down there is a um, a handle for a manual hydraulic uh, pump in the event of emergency or you can charge the hydraulic system if you're on the ground so that's that there's our yoke and it is a ram's horn yoke so check out the flight controls while we're doing this and there's a mic on the yoke and there's also a mic and uh, oxygen mask plugged in here, it goes behind there and it's stored behind the seat, but there's a fire extinguisher too if we need that. But yeah, I can't get to that. Um, actually, that's the passenger oxygen valve right there. So it's not modeled. Here's some therapeutic oxygen, oxygen if you need that. I, I might need that, actually. I think I could use a little. Okay, let's get back on task here. Um, where'd we get to? Okay, the last thing was the uh, master warning system and the A-horse mode, left and right, they're in the normal position and A-horse is down here and nothing's really modeled in here. It is in the normal mode, stays in the normal mode. So we could transfer it, um, these instruments over here and vice versa if there's a failure. And A-horse basically is all the electronics that gives our avionics their um, whiz bang that tells us which way we're going, where we are, etc. So that's part of the system. That's um yeah. Attitude A horse. Attitude heading reference system. Maybe that's it. Um transfer switches or extinguish uh, okay we talked about the auxiliary hydraulic system handle, the dump valve and pressurization. Let's go ahead and set that come over here and I'm just going to bring the controller the inner scale is our um, flight our cruise level so we're going to be cruising today at flight level 280 so I'm just going to keep spinning this around till we get up to about there which is in there there's 300 there and so cabin altitude to be about 7700 feet or so we'll check that after we take off and the overhead panel um, let me back up just a little bit here. There's a few uh, tests that we could do up there, up here. One is the enunciator test, and we can see that those all enunciate. If I'm quick enough, I can see that. Yeah, I'm not quite quick enough, but they do. I've checked it. And then there's a stall stick shaker, and both sound the same. Engine fire bell, it's working. I could test them both, but I'm just going to go through them and the. Um, high pressure air overheat and I think there's actually an indication down there that we get on that ice detection there's a light there that comes on cabin altitude there's that and then this one's going to bring up a whole series of call outs and I'll probably edit out some of them but light slow pull up danger 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 too low terrain sink rate don't sink. Too low. Gear. Too low. Flaps. Bank angle. Twenty. Ten. Okay, so all those are working. And these are our overspeed warnings. And I don't get any uh, sound from those. Seems like I should. Um, but I'm not getting that. And I'm not seeing any indications either. But that system does work, I promise you, because I've oversped and I can, it, it lets you know. And um, angle of attack, there's the um, gauge right there, and it, yeah, checks it. And then this is communication uh, system that's not modeled, and I don't see a test. The, um, there's a phone back over in this area here that's part of that for communicating. So we won't be needing that today and that concludes those tests. Our alternators are in the off position and ice detector switch, we're gonna bring that into auto and notice this ignition switch is on so this loads up that way and actually we don't want that on and also this computer 
is um, in the overspeed protection um, setting and I just want that off so go ahead and put that in the off position for right now and no smoking switch is I'm going to leave that just in the on you can put it in auto but we'll leave it on all the anti-ice is off off and our ignitions are now off engine computers are now off engine sync is off and we got uh, in one in uh, I'm sorry, into N1 and off. Okay. Autopilot, um, let's see. I want to just go ahead and just while I got it on my mind, I'll go ahead and set our initial altitude. So there's two knobs. The outer one's hundreds, the inner one is thousands. And we're going to set it up to our initial altitude of 14,000. There's 14,000. And let's go ahead and come down and take a look at our flight management system. So this is the Collins ProLine 21 and um, I would consider this to be a, a light version. Uh, it's not fully functional but it does have some useful tools that we'll use. First thing we need to do is put in where we are, tell it where we are. So we're going to put in um, our current airport is Papa Alpha Yankee Alpha. And we'll use the soft key here, put that in. And then we can go ahead and go to our flight plan page. Let's tell it where we want to go. And our destination identifiers, Papa Alpha, Echo, November. Destination. And then we want to give it our first in route waypoint, which is KTAT intersection, which will get us on the jet route. And go. Alpha Tango. So that's where we're heading. And now let's go to the next page and let's tell it we're going to fly the jet route. So we're going to put that in this Jet 501 here. So that's the VIA. Discontinuity. We need to tell it where we're going to get off. So we're going to get off at the Johnson Point VR, which is Juliet Oscar November, or Hotel, Juliet Oscar Hotel. Hotel, hotel, hotel. There it is. So that's where we're heading. And then finally, we want to put in our last waypoint on our route, which is the sewer fix. And that is not what you think. It is a short uh, for Seward. So we're going to be flying over Seward. And that's our, <clears throat> basically, that's our flight plan. Now let's look at the legs. And we see everything in there. The default altitudes are uh, flight level 280. And when we get up and uh, get the cruise altitude, we'll uh, program in the arrival. So that's good. Let's go back to this page here. And while we're in here, we can tune our radios from here. This is where we tune them. So we don't have control heads, so we do it all right here. And <clears throat> we can put it, um, frequency in the preset. Then you can put, put that in the scratch pad and then bring it up and put it into the comm. But um, I've not been able to get these to actually really communicate with them. Um, like I can't pick up an ATIS or ASOS or anything. So I don't know if something's up wrong with the radios. I'm not really worried about that. Um, they're really, I don't want to talk to anybody anyway. So I am going to put in, though, I will put in the um, squawk code because we'll do that from here too. So we'll put that in, <coughs> 0316, and that's in there. And the other thing is there's some performance information here. So that's our fuel load that we have on. We're burning right now 44 pounds per hour with the APU running. And um, there's three pages here. Uh, I rarely ever see these modeled correctly on uh, Coronado's aircraft. Um, right now I'm getting negative numbers and I, don't, I can't reset these. At least I don't know how to. Maybe I should say it that way. Um, I don't think there's a way. Uh, if there is, let me know. But at <coughs> any rate, um, yeah, negative numbers. And then over here, um, this information is telling me how much fuel we need, which looks about right to me. Um, our ground speed is zero, and that looks right. Our distance looks right, but what doesn't look right is our estimated time in route, three hours and 31 minutes. So I don't think it will take us that long to get there. Uh, we're going to be flying over 400 uh, knots and we've got 353 miles to go so you do that math 
that doesn't look right. We'll go back to legs and we'll call that done. And let's see, altimeter will set that. And this is where, again, I can't read. It looks like it's set on um, 3010. And let me see what the altimeter reading is. It's actually 3035, so fairly high pressure. And we can set that right here. That also, whenever it's set here, it sets here and over at the co-pilot side too. So three places, normally you would set them independently, but they all set together and that's fine by me. And fuel quantity, uh, we can just look at our, um, over here on our co-pilot side and I can see we've got about 4,300 pounds close to that. And the ventral tank, we don't know, is it doesn't tell us. The only time I've seen a reading here is if the tank's full. But as soon as you burn some out of it, it goes to this crosshatch. So you gotta, there is a way you can figure it out, but it doesn't tell us there for some reason. Okay, so that's okay. We got enough fuel in our wings. So we're just gonna be happy as we can be to use that. And we're ready to start our engine. So we're gonna go up here and let's cut our beacon on. And let's bring our engine computers up into the auto mode. Let's bring on our fuel pumps. Let's cut on our engine ignition. And we're gonna add the start power. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna start the engine starter. We're gonna look for N1 rotation. I see it. We're gonna come down here, cut on our fuel, and then go back up here and monitor oil pressure, ITT, N1 rotation, looking for a light, seeing the oil pressure indication low oil pressure oil pressure is rising light went out ITT is coming back down we have a good light then we want to look back up here make sure our starter disengaged it did and we'll repeat the process for number one and we've got in one down here add fuel back up here and one's coming up oil pressure is rising Watching for a light. There's the light. Monitoring the ITT. Oil pressure still coming up. N1's rising. And oil pressure light went out. We've got two good lights there. Let's go back up here. And let's take this power off right there. And after start, we could go ahead and bring our generators on. But they're not modeled properly, so we can't bring them on. We still got a failure. And uh, that's not right. But we'll get them on. And show you how to do it but first let's go back and let's cut this one off so normally we would trip the generator to do that and we get rid of the uh, the bleed air so we'll cut that off and then we can hit the stop button here and I see that this still up in this the start um, position so I guess it's not spring loaded but anyway we'll put that just to own and it's going to wind down Actually, it's not because, there we go, now it's going to, I think, because I clicked the button there. So, the RPMs are coming down, EGT's coming down, um, it's the gen load, yep, everything's winding down from there. So, that's what we want. Okay, now back to our overhead. So, just looking, we've got no charging going coming to our batteries up here in terms of amperage. We do have AC volts coming out of the inverters here. We've got 23 volts showing here. Let's bring the alternators online and look at there. Now, for some reason, the alternators are doing the job of the generator. So, okay, it took the lights out and we've got voltage, we've got amperage, so we got what we need. And we're gonna leave the fuel pumps on and we're gonna turn the ignitions off until we Part. and I think we're all set up there just double check make sure I didn't miss anything yeah all that's good and let's see now just before we taxi um, double check our trims we check our electric trim here and it works and I'll show you one way to set it is um, you watch right here I'm pushing nose down notice we get a caution light there's too much nose down so I'll bring it back till the light goes out and I can come aft with it nose up and also 
caution light comes on, so I'll trim it back. So basically it's going to be right there in the middle. But you do get a caution light if it's out of the parameters. And flaps handles right there. It's hard to see it, but um, you use my switch on my yoke. There we go, 15 degrees. And here's our air brakes, and they're closed. Um, shut I should say there's open and then the dump feature is for landing um, to dump the lift you can um, if you've got full flaps on bring it all the way down and it's kind of a trick to do because you got to look down but you bring it all the way down and you get more air brake and more flaps something like I don't know the flaps go almost pretty much perpendicular to the wing so it creates a lot of drag there for you I haven't really needed that I can use uh, the reverse thrust and brakes and flaps and air brake and I get there okay and we checked our flight controls already that's good APU master is off and thrust reversers are off and let's get on to taxi light and just one click right there gets that in there release parking brake and ready to taxi So we're going to go ahead and end this part right here. Next part, we'll come back and we'll do before takeoff checklist and take off, climb out, and climb up to our cruising altitude. So thanks for being with me on this part. Look forward to seeing you on, seeing you on the next part. Until then, from FS Mania, thanks for watching. So long. Jet speed 46, anchorage approach, ready to turn 10 degrees left. 10 left, jet speed 46.